Hello everyone. In this video we will learn how to download, install, and configure the AnyConnect VPN software. I'll start in Google. Uh, I did a search for UD VPN and I see um, the, my first result is the exact thing that I want. So we're going to click that. It says here, you deploy. So we are at the you deploy software distribution portion of the University of Delaware site. So this, um, this repository here has software in it that you can download for free. So you might find other things in there that you like. You can search around by looking through by category or by platform. You can look around for other things in there. Uh, we're concerned with AnyConnect VPN, which is what we were led to because of our Google search. Um, if you would like to read up a little bit about what the VPN software is doing, it's just really, it's just in a nutshell, it's providing us with an, a private encrypted tunnel in, into the, the UD network so that our computer becomes a part of the network rather than being a part of um, Comcast or Verizon network. We're, we're actually becoming, we're masquerading as, a, a, as, as being on uh, the UD network. Um, I would then kind of direct your attention to, let's see, I'm trying to grab something here. The software download section over here, um, where you would want to pick up whichever distribution is appropriate for you. Now, I mean, it's going to be either Linux, Mac, or Windows, one of those three. Probably most people Windows, but could be some Macs. Be interesting if there was a Linux. Download that and install as necess as usual, as you would normally do. Now, if you want a little bit of help with it, for Windows, I mean, there's only two things to do, so there's not much to, to go about. Uh, same with Mac, and you're going to install it in pretty much the same way that you've always done it. I've not installed it on Mac, but I do see that they have a warning here where they don't want you to double-click the, the installer, right? So they want you to do it a different way. I, I, I can't tell you. I've not done it. And Linux, of course, there's two bullets there too. So that would be all you have to do in order to get it located, downloaded, and installed. So once you have it installed, you'll be able to see, um, here I'll show you in a moment. Let's see, let me find this. I found it. It's at the bottom of this page, which uh, we'll look at next, the VPN software help files. Click that after you've installed, and then you'll receive, you'll get this page, so which is just use it. And so what I was gonna mention, like, no, so let's look at the bottom of this page, on a Windows machine, if you click that little up arrow there, that one right there, you'll see the world icon here. That is AnyConnect, All right? So if you click that, then we can we can take off on the rest of this. So you'll notice this box will pop up. This is all correct. It's, it's been, since you got this software from the UD repository, it's been partially set up already. And so um, this is the, definitely the, the domain you're trying to connect with. And so won't you go ahead and click connect there. And then we'll get this dialog box. And we want to stick with this as the group. It's already preloaded there. So now username is your username, but does not include the at udell.edu. So my email address is wboyer at udell.edu. Therefore my username or my UDID is W Boyer. It does not include the at udell.edu. That's your email address. Although there are some times, some occasions, when you will use the entire username at udell.edu as a username. This is not one of the cases. All right, that's so we've got we know the group, we know the username. This is your password. It's the same password that you put in when you're logging into Webmail. So user, your username and, and webmail um, and, and password for UD, right? And then we've got 
this last little bit here called the second password, which we need to put in right here. This is the two-factor identification number. All right, so I'm sure you're already, I'm pretty sure you already have two-factor authentication set up. And we can verify that if you log into your email, then you'll get a username and password dialog box. And when you click OK there, it then another bot dialog box pops up and probably a text message comes to you. And you, you copy that number into the dialog box that resulted. So that's your, sometimes it's called second password, like it's written here. Uh, it's your, two, your second factor, authentication. Okay, so we're gonna need to be able to get that number to show up somewhere or other. What will, there's two ways to make this happen. One way is kind of a little clunky, I think. We'll do that first, and then I'll show you how to do it a little bit better, uh, a little cleaner. But for right now, you can type, S, I've done it, so I know it works, SMS1 and click OK. You'll get, the text message will come through on your phone with the, the two-factor authentication number. Then you'll get this dialog box back again. It, unfortunately, you have to type your username in again and your password in again and then that text message, third, right? So it's a little clunky, right, to go this way. I have a way to get around that. We have a way, and it's on the sheet, so uh, we're gonna use Google Authenticator, right? We can use Google Authenticator to get around that. But for right now, if you just type SMS1 and then click OK, with your second factor authentication, then you should get connected. It should happen. You should be. You should wind up being connected. Okay, so if that has worked for you and you were connected, then let's go ahead and start talking about uh, Google Authenticator. So with Google Authenticator, we will not have to wait for a text message anymore. Uh, Authenticator is an application that you install on your phone. You'll find it at the App Store or Google Play. Um, you install this application and it calculates the two-factor authentication so you don't have to receive texts anymore. Uh, that, that's actually beneficial in, in ways that you may not think. If you happen to be in a room where you don't have cell, cell service, um, you can still, Google Authenticator can still generate the two-factor authentication. So you may have uh, Wi-Fi access, but not cell phone access, uh, which would leave you in a kind of tricky position if you had to wait for a, a text message. So Google Authenticator is kind of uh, convenient in that way. Um, so let's look into how we can get Google Authenticator installed. I guess I would say that it's optional, but it's certainly preferred. Okay, so back to this page. Now I circled Google Authenticator down here. I probably should have circled it up here uh, because this particular link, if that's actually a link, I don't think it is. Let's see. Oh, it is. Don't worry about that link. This is if you don't, you need a two factor authentication if you do not have uh, authentic, whatever, just, just forget about it. We want to click this link right here, the top one, Google Authenticator, and we will get this page. So I'm scrolling down this page a little bit here, and um, I want to just point out, uh-oh, I need this. This is the link we're going to be looking for, ultimately here. Uh, we're going to need two links. Number one, we're going to have to download and install Google Authenticator from Google Play or uh, the App Store. Right, one of those two, depending on your phone. Once it's installed, 
then what we want to do is come into my UD settings. Now, I, this, this next note here is just saying or suggesting that the assumption through this conversation is that you already are using two-factor authentication. That is, you're receiving a text from UD. Uh, if not, then, then that's a, a separate issue where you're going to have to... I, I don't think they have new people coming in to UD that don't use two-factor authentication, so I don't think we're going to worry about that. If, in fact, it's a problem, just let me know, and we'll see what to do around that. But for right now, we just want to click My UD Settings. Oh, once we've got it, it downloaded, right? So we have Google Authenticator on our phone, on your phone. Then we'll click My UD Settings. Say My UD Settings. It's listed right here. Uh oh, I have the line drawn. And we want to change the the whole point is to change the the, the two factor authentication settings. So currently, our current settings. Let me change this thing so I can do what I want. Current settings. You probably have your phone number right there. You may have a backup number right here. Could be your parents' number or something. I don't know. All right. And you probably have this blue primary button next to this or your phone number. All right. It's right, right at that, at that first red. As you can see, I've changed my primary method of receiving two-factor authentication from being texted. I don't have to, I'm not texted anymore. They, the UD expects when I'm logging in, they expect me to get my two-factor authentication from Google Authenticator, right? So that's what primary there means, that I'm using Google Authenticator. Now, as you can see from when we first installed the VPN software, we did put uh, SMS one in that authentication box and the system was able to understand that what we meant was we want it texted to SMS one. It's our first text. So this is called SMS one. The system knows this is SMS one. So you can, we can always force it to send the two factor authentication to this phone in, in a text. But we're, we're suggesting here that we don't really want to do it that way anymore. We want to just use Google Authenticator. So it's this button here that will cause primary or allow you to change what's primary, right? So you'll want to click on that. You've got Google Authenticator on your phone. You're now saying to UD, this is the primary method I want to do two-factor authentication by. Um, this is like an aside. I don't know why that this they stick this in between here, I guess. But there are some emergency codes here, and this is useful to know. You might even want to print this out. I think there's a print button. Yeah, there it is right here. You could print this on your computer, save it, uh, print it to a, a PDF, and save it on your computer somewhere. There's what, uh, eight or, or ten? I've covered mine up because I'm posting this video online. I don't really want it out there like that. Uh, but you can use any of those numbers as an SMS. Uh, I'm sorry, not as an SMS, as a two-factor authentication number as well. Now, I believe each number only gets one use. So one time per number and it's over. But you do have some options if you, for instance, forgot your phone. If you were at school and forgot your phone, but had access to one of those numbers anyway, and it was not used yet <laughs> by you, then you could type one of those numbers in that's that's in this location right here right and then you would you would get a you would get access um, and I believe that might be about all we have to do let me see here Well, I'm going to have to leave you a little bit on your own, I think, on this, because I believe my page has changed because I have it installed already. Uh, I can tell you if we go back to this page where we clicked on uh, my UD settings to get that second page, what that reads afterwards is how you set up um, 
how you work with that page. Yet. So it's it's a little funny, right? Why uh, they would have you go to the settings and then tell you what to do in the settings, but not in the settings page. So a little strange. So we'll want to come down here. I can tell you in a nutshell kind of what, what we would do or what you're going to do here is open up Google Authenticator, try to add a new um, domain, I guess I'm going to call it. It's a new, uh, I don't know, uh, account. So you'll have a special UD account for, for anyone who wants to use this. Any, any, if you had another Google Authenticator, another two-factor authentication login at some other establishment, and they use Google Authenticator, then you would have another, you would add another line here. So then you would have two, <laughs> two-factor authentications, one for UD, one for that separate entity. Uh, but you're going to open this up, you're going to add an entity. Um, there's a QR code that I believe you would get if you, see if I click this right now, It shows this on my screen, QR code, but I recall there being a QR code there. So I think because I've already set this up, the QR code is not showing. For you, you would open up Google Authenticator, add an account, select that you want to add the account by reading a QR code, and then read this QR code, which will exist on your side. And then when you came, if you come back to this again, you'll probably not have a QR code there just like I don't because it's already been done. That's my suspicion. In any case, you can bang around with it and see if you can figure it out. It, it, it wasn't hard. I did it in, in just minutes. It was over before I knew it. I, I, there was nothing to it. So it's probably sounds worse in this video than it actually is. And there are some step-by-step instructions here and there's an example of um, one of the, the six digit number all right I think that will do it for this video it seems like it turned into a kind of long video I will say hold on a second here I will say that I have no intention of these videos being this long I would like to make them I would like to keep them short and um, I kind of like them to be a little bit live so I don't want to do much if any editing on these videos so we'll see how that goes as we move along this is the first one so um, we'll see how it goes but hopefully this one worked for you let me know in the comments I suppose if uh, if it all worked out okay and and you think this will these will get better, I think. As time goes on, I think they'll get better. All right. I'm signing out on this one. Putty is next.